Uh, my name is Martin Frey and I actually manage the Medical Research Council's Frozen Embryo and Sperm Archive, which has been in existence since the early 1970s. At the present time, the archive holds over 2,000 unique mouse strains, many of which represent uh, unique models of human disease. We're also members of the European Mouse Mutant Archive, EMMA, which is supported by InfraFrontier. Within the EMMA archive, there are over 6,000 mouse strains, many of which have been generated as part of the International Mouse Phenotypings Consortium, uh, Consortium's attempt to knock out every gene in the mouse genome, which is 20,000 or so genes. By necessity, uh, scientists need to exchange mice with, with collaborators so they continue with their research or uh, develop a new approach to, to their research. And repositories like ours are very keen to promote this sharing, but we're also very keen to minimise the number of uh, live mice that are being shipped. Uh, and to do this, scientists need alternatives to live animal exportation, um, which are cheap, simple and easy to use. And one such method is the, the exchange of mouse sperm, frozen mouse sperm, on dry ice. And this technique has been developed in conjunction with our colleagues at the CNR's Montetondo Laboratory in Italy. As I've mentioned, this technique is simple, cheap and easy to use and doesn't involve the return of dry shippers like the one I've got here, which adds to the expense and complexity of conventional uh, exchange of frozen materials. We have uh, so far um, exchanged something in the order of 200 strains of frozen sperm on dry ice without complications and this material has been sent all around the world. In our experience uh, we're now confident that uh, frozen sperm will remain viable uh, at uh, dry ice temperatures for over two years. What is more, the sperm can be returned to liquid nitrogen for long-term storage if required. Okay, so um, if you wish to send out uh, samples frozen in vials, um, it is simply a case of removing the vial from the long-term storage and placing the sample in a dry ice container like the one I've got here. That then needs to be covered in that needs to be covered in dry ice. Uh, frozen uh, straws are a little bit more uh, complicated uh, because they are um, so fragile. It's important to place the straw in an outer casing to protect it to protect them during transportation. These again need to be embedded in the dry ice. And then it's simply a case of filling the uh, container, putting the lid on the container, uh, closing it up, putting the address label on and handing it over to the courier. So our experience is that approximately five kilograms of dry ice is sufficient when sending um, samples across Europe. Um, however, if we need to send material um, further afield, say to North America, we'll fill up our uh, containers with uh, about 7.5 kilograms of dry ice and th this is sufficient for most circumstances. Fortunately with dry ice, uh, if there is a, a hold up at a, um, a custom station, it's often possible to get the, um, uh, the handling agents to top up uh, the container with dry, with dry ice. So just to reiterate, as long as your samples are at dry ice temperature, they are perfectly safe. Um, if you want to find out any more about these uh, protocols, please visit our uh, websites. You can, the protocols are presented on the InfraFrontier website, as well as the Medical Research Council's Harwell Institute's website. Thank you.